Okay, it is officially 2.30. We're going to go ahead and get started. We want to be um, respectful of your time. Welcome to our Site Technology Facilitators virtual meeting for September. This is the afternoon session. If you haven't already, please tune in to our um, Agenda HyperDoc. You can access that at tinyurl.com slash stfvirtual. Um, that document is what you're viewing on my screen right now, and you will be able to access all of our resources, everything that we're going to talk about, everything that links to this presentation um, by visiting and getting connected to that HyperDoc. So please definitely um, visit there. Some other pieces of business that we want to make sure um, everybody's taking care of. Thank you for joining us. We have, most of you have um, placed your names on the list, but we want to make sure if there's anybody who hasn't um, placed your name on the list, if it says um, just caller or anonymous, you want to make sure that you put your name um, in because um, that's how we'll be giving credit for today's meeting. So make sure your name is on the list of attendees um, in the control panel of GoToMeeting on your desktop. So before we go too much further, I just want to do a few introductions. Um, under number one on our agenda, there is a welcome in there and there's introductions. If you click on the welcome, I just want to introduce everybody to our new Meet the Team page on our website. Um, Dr. Seals has done an excellent job of updating that for us. You'll see um, we have our director, our executive director, and our director here as well. And then all of our team members are now listed on this, on this page. Our team has grown um, in the past few months. And so if you've been unsure about who to contact or how to contact them, um, you can come and view this list and get connected to whoever on your team is the right person um, to reach out to for help. And again, that was hyperlinked under number one um, on the welcome hyperlink. Next up, we're going to move on to introductions. If you click on introductions and you click on the Padlet link there, there is um, a Padlet here that some from this afternoon had already added to. I want to invite you to add to it as well. So the directions say, please share an instructional technology when you have either had personally or witnessed at your site in the past month. I know a lot of times when we come to our meetings, we talk about um, troubleshooting and how can we help and, and things that have been frustrating or questions that you have. But I'd like to start today's meeting with just some wins that we've had in the past month. Maybe you have seen a teacher using Nearpod already. Maybe you did a redelivery that went really well. Um, maybe you have finished uh, inventorying all of your Chromebooks, but I just want to encourage everybody to add a little brag to our brag board about something that's going well for you personally or at your site that has to do with instructional technology. I see some here from this morning have talked about um, they've already started their Googlio, which is awesome. Um, some have posted about all their Chromebooks are now in, which is also wonderful. And um, some have talked about some of the redelivery that they've already done. And we're so excited for you guys and kind of cheering you on um, from the back, excited that you guys are getting those redeliveries in and that they're going well at your site. I think we even earlier saw some posts about some teachers that were going to be getting Google certified, as well as some that were interested in pursuing um, the Nearpod training and certification as well. So that's super, super exciting. And don't hesitate, like if you read something that you think is really awesome, there are stars here. You can actually click one of the stars and kind of give them like a rating, like, yay, that's awesome, to help them celebrate something that's um, really awesome. It looks like somebody's posting that they're almost Google certified, and that's that's wonderful. We've actually had, I think, two or three since this morning's meeting send in uh, their credentials for certification, and so we're excited that every day um, more Google certifications are rolling in, um, and that's awesome. We're excited to celebrate those. It's a lot of great stuff here. Google certified, all right. Okay, so 
while you guys continue to add to the Padlet, I just want to go over a few norms. Um, I know that doing our meeting online is something that's a little bit new for all of us. It's new for our team. Um, although Carla, I know um, Ms. Kuiper is kind of the queen of webinars with her webinar Wednesdays, but for some of the rest of our team, this is something that's a little bit new to us. And so while we're growing into this new area, we know that our STFs are also growing in this new area. And so we just want to talk about some norms that will help this webinar to go smoothly. So the first thing that you should always do when you join our webinars is make sure that you mute yourself. This is so that we don't have a feedback loop. Um, and if you're actually in the room with someone else and um, you unmute yourself so you can ask a question, you want to make sure that only one device is unmuted at a time. Otherwise, you'll get that feedback loop. Um, we also want to kind of recap how to connect digitally. So in our, it's been posted in several places. Um, the directions are now posted on Go Sign Me Up. There was a flyer that was sent out via email, although we know this morning there were some issues with email. Um, but there is a flyer that's out there that um, advertised this meeting, and at the bottom, it explained how to get connected. So if you haven't already, you want to make sure that you go to Go Sign Me Up and you register for this webinar so that we were able to give you CLUs for this webinar. There's two ways to get connected. You can get connected by using the link, or you can get connected by using um, by dialing in with your phone and using the access code. And you see that there was information for the morning session as well as the afternoon session. I know that all of you obviously were able to figure it out. You're here with us now, so kudos to you for figuring it out. But um, if you have a buddy who's having a little bit of trouble, you can refer them to, um, to that flyer to help them to get connected um, to our meeting digitally. So you again, you can dial in and you can connect digitally through a device. If you have a question, there are a couple ways that you can ask a question. You can go to the chat uh, window and type in your question there. Our team is all online, so I may answer your question or one of our other team members may answer your question. If, because we had some technical difficulties earlier today, if for whatever reason you are unable to post your question in the chat box, don't hesitate to kind of unmute yourself and ask a question. We don't mind questions at all. We will actually be stopping during our presentation at several points to invite questions. So if you want to hold until we invite, that's fine as well. But um, don't be afraid. We're here to help. This is totally interactive. So just because you're muted in general doesn't mean that um, you can't actually join in and ask us a question. Um, we've talked about how to access the resources. This tiny rail. Um, dot com slash STF virtual will link you to this document. This document has hyperlinks to all the resources that we're going to talk about today. So it's kind of a one stop shop to get everything from today's meeting in one place. I just want to make sure um, right here again, it's talking about registration, attendance and CLUs. I want to make sure that you understand how to get credit. You need to make sure number one, you're registered in GSMU. Number two, you are in uh, this meeting that your name is actually on the attendees list. So if you logged in and you logged in anonymously, you want to go back and add your name so that we know who you are. And number three, at the end of this meeting, there will be an exit survey. We'll be asking you to complete. It's simple. It's just five questions and then a review of this webinar. Um, it's really helpful for us to get feedback from you. This is our first virtual STF um, webinar. And while we think we are awesome, we know that there's always ways that we can improve. And so your feedback, your honest feedback is really important to help us to improve and to make these really useful and targeted for you guys. So uh, just a quick agenda overview. I know you're all capable of looking over what we're going to be discussing, but several of our team members will be bringing you information about different topics from Nearpod, um, some of our support resources, the technology readiness survey, destination Google, and we have some Google Bootcamp dates to announce for you that are really exciting. Carl is going to bring us a lot of great information about Clever. Ms. Thomas will share with us about maps, and then we'll have um, some time for general questions that maybe we haven't covered a topic but you have a question about it. Without further ado, I am going to hand over the presentation to Ms. Sahara and um, Sahara and Nikki are going to take you through um, some information about Nearpod. All right, thank you Mrs. Arsenault. Good afternoon you guys. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen.
on your screen, you should see a code for Nearpod. Go ahead and go to nearpod.com. Once they in this code, so that you guys can go ahead and join our live session. Give you guys about 30 to 45 seconds to do this. And if you can't join us right now, you're just listening, that's fine. Um, but those that can participate, go ahead and participate. We understand if you are just listening, you still have your class or you have other duties, we do understand. We have um, provided a self-paced code in the STF classroom for you guys to access at your own leisure. So if you are calling in or if you're trying to just listen while like, like while Ms. Nikki said, um, maybe doing your own duties, please definitely feel free to kind of go at it at your own pace later on today. If you're still trying to log in, remember the code is in the left-hand corner of the screen. So the screen says, welcome back to school. We know that we've been in school for a month, but this, is a, it, this entire Nearpod lesson will be to just kind of um, get you guys refreshed um, after your long weekend and hopefully expose you guys to some new things within Nearpod. Hopefully everyone has already kind of re-delivered their, um, their Nearpod presentations back at their school sites. If not, please feel free to reach out to us so that we can go ahead and assist you guys at your school sites. Okay, so really quickly on your screen, there should be a poll. Um, it asks, are you finished with your beginning of the year responsibilities? So have you possibly re-delivered Nearpod or have you finished Chromebook inventory or have you completed your one-to-one -one redelivery? So go ahead really quickly, I'm gonna hide your name so that we're not all in y'all's business and share with us if you have finished your beginning of the year responsibilities. So I have a yes, I'm all finished, kudos to you. No, I need some help. So we'll see who you are and, and we'll, we'll definitely reach out. To you. Definitely. And you guys, please, please, please remember our team is here to support you guys. So if you need extra hands on deck to assist with Chromebook inventory or even redelivering something, please reach out to your school's district facilitator so that we can come out and assist y'all at your school. And that's our responsibility. That's our job. Don't feel like you're bothering us. Feel free to just reach out and we can come assist you. All right, thank you guys right. for doing this quick poll. So let's get pumped. Whoop, whoop. All right, on this slide, you're gonna watch a short video. I love this video about the kid president. You've probably seen it before. Um, just to get you pumped up because I know we were hoping we would be all for <laughs> the storm and we had to come to work. So just a little motivation, peace. So remember in Nearpod, I can always choose if I want to play it on only my device or all devices. For this purpose, I'm going to only play it on my device. It's time to get our learn on. And we got a lot to learn, too. I don't know a lot a few things. Science. Space, you matter. It's just science, man. Don't be a bully. Don't even be a bully to the bullies. It just makes more bullies. We can all be awful sometimes. We can all also be awesome. It's time to be more awesome. And that's what's time for. History. We gotta study it so we don't repeat it. But if history does repeat itself, then I'm gonna name my pet dinosaur. Original. I just hope he doesn't eat me. We can't just study history. We gotta make history. And history is made by ordinary people. Ordinary people like you and me. And that guy, the world's greatest thinkers, Confucius, Albert Einstein, Justin Timberlake. They put their pants on one leg at a time, just like me. If I put my pants on one leg at a time, I'm dancing. <laughs> you can go by. Yeah. You're gonna be in the video, though. Life is cool, and you gotta show up. You can't just sleep in, you can't be late. And you can't just hang out in the bathroom, not broke. <laughs> It's like what Whitman said, yo, yo, except he didn't say that, but you would know that we would be a book, people, seriously, we read a book, any book, except the vampire ones. You want to change the world? You got to know about it. What if Shakespeare didn't go to school? His plays would be even more confusing. To be or not to be? Is that the question? I don't know what question is. I didn't go to school. Anybody? Help me up too. I got a question for you. But why are you teaching the world? How to be boring? How to make the world sad? <laughs> no! No, you're not. We're teaching the world what looks like to be awesome. 
No matter who you are, somebody's learning from you. Never buys a teacher, never buys a student. Look for the teacher see things. They see when you're running down the hall. They see when you're passing notes. But they also see the person that we can all become someday. A writer or a speaker or a Martin Luther King teacher. Keep teaching. Students, keep studying. That's not a word. Sorry about that. Here's to teachers that see the awesome. The homework is this. Teach the world. Do it. So we just wanted to remind you that we think you're awesome and continue the great work. And just try to remain being that leader on your school site that can kind of hopefully be a merry goal for those other lead those other teachers at your school site to hopefully expose them to some cool things that they can do in their classroom regarding tech integration. All right, so moving on. All right, share, but we're going to let some people, maybe two people, share out loud um, any goals that you have as an STF this year that you would like to share with the group. We're just going to take a minute or so to do that. If anyone has a goal that they would like to share out loud, this will be your time. You can either share it out loud, so unmute your microphone, or go ahead and just share it in the chat in the right-hand side. Any takers, any takers. Are some violent takers? So I'll go ahead and start off. How about that? So one of my goals for this school year is to definitely support my 12 schools in the best way that I can. Amazing STFs at my school sites. So I'm hoping that I can support them in all of the ways that I can. Miss um, Shingleton at, at Mag Woods, she has said that her goal is to obtain level two certification. Miss Laura at Cedar Crest is trying to also become Google trainer. So awesome. Miss Hall at Wham, good job. Google certified and Nearpod certified. So remember, we're trying to push that Nearpod certification out. Mrs. Hines, level two certifi certification, excuse me. So awesome, you guys. Miss Doris, so one more with all of the responsibilities that we're asking you guys. So we know we asked you guys of so many things. So this may kind of be a little overwhelming for those who are new STFs. Um, remember, you guys have us to come out and support. Please feel free to harass us. I tell all my STFs to harass us, harass us, harass us. Write us emails, call us, whatever you need to do to get us to get in contact so we can provide support to you guys. Thank you. And we'll go back and read all of your goals. And we want you to keep your goals in mind as we go through this lesson. So how can I or we as your, your helpers, as district facilitators, help you meet your goals? So let us know, is there anything that we can do to help you and to ensure that you reach your goals? Just feel free to type in and we'll give you one minute to uh, type in your responses. So some, some things that maybe you can type in um, are possibly Chromebook inventories. So maybe you're still struggling getting those Chromebooks out to your teachers and maybe you need some extra hands on deck to come out and help you guys. Whatever you have you need, as a school site. You need one-on-one -on -one support with your Googlio. You want us to sit down and look at how far along you've been. Let us know what we can do to help you. Or maybe your goal is to possibly become level one, level two, our trainer certified. So let us know what things we can do to help you guys. So we have some questions about finalizing trainer application, even obtaining level one. Awesome. Keep offering some boot camps, and we'll have some more information about our boot camps coming up later on this meeting. Help with Googlio. So remember, as the teacher, I can share out some um, awesome answers to you guys as my students. So on your screen, an answer that I like can, can pop up on your side. I can unshare it. One-to-one -one support, okay, level one. And you are doing great. So thank you very much. Whoever just gave us that gold star, I greatly appreciate it. Give you guys about 15 more seconds to type in your responses. Okay. All right. Thank you guys for being honest with us on how we can help you as a team to help you support, to help support you to meet your goals. All right, let's get inspired. So 
we're going to want you to we want you to read and reflect on the following quotes and how you can use these to apply starting a new school year. So you can click on the quotes and it'll show you a different one or just swiping and you'll get to scan through all of the different quotes. So we'll give you one minute to skim and scan through the, the quotes. All right, so you guys have had a chance to kind of go through these quotes. On the next slide, we would like you guys to circle the top two quotes that you liked or you, mo or you maybe related to the most. And we'll give you just one minute to submit your answer, less than that to get your answer submitted. Okay, so this person selected the more that you read, the more things you will know, the more that you learn, the more places you'll go. I love that one from Dr. Seuss. And my favorite one, education is our passport to the future for tomorrow, belongs to the people who prepare for it today. That is very true. Education is the most powerful weapon with you, which you can use to change the world. That is true. So hopefully this activity has has kind of given given you guys excuse me a chance to reflect on your purpose. Remember, we're all teachers at heart. We've all kind of gone into this, into this profession for a reason. So hopefully these quotes have allowed you guys to kind of reflect on your purpose and your journey to where you are now. All right, let's share about ourselves. So. You're going to do this is a fun activity that I enjoy. Um, you're going to give me some ingredients of yourself. So you're going to share some things with us, um, like your interests, your hobbies, things you enjoy doing throughout the school week. And look at this example. So this person spends 30 percent of their day or their week on soccer, 25 percent as a trainer. So you get to get that and then the ingredients that that person needs any love, happiness, faith, inspiration, creativity, fun. So in a second, we're gonna have you give me your nutritional facts. What do you need? You can include your personal and your work life and what ingredients make up you. Remember at the very top hand le top left of your uh, screen, if you would like to look at the example that we just showed you guys, click on that picture and, uh, and it will um, enlarge it for you guys to refer back to for any additional assistance. So go ahead, we'll give you guys about two, two minutes. minutes to um, fill out your little ingredient uh, nutritional facts page about yourself. Remember, as a teacher, I can switch to student view by clicking this little S in the top right corner of my screen. I can change it to student show my kids what I expect. So I can go ahead and do a practice example if they need additional support. And I can switch right back to the teacher view. Give you guys about one more minute 
And it's okay, like we said, we know some of you guys may be listening instead of doing, that's perfectly fine. But if you are able to kind of interact with us, go ahead and submit your nutritional fat card. So, so one person has done cooking 25%, reading 25%, movies 25%, and the last one, I guess they're just had, they're still trying to figure it out, is 25% as well. So this one on your screen now, we have um, wife 33.3%, mother and educator. So they're kind of split in thirds. And there are ingredients, sp spiritual, sweet, spicy, I love it, <laughs> and fun loving. So this is an awesome activity that you guys can either do with your students or with your faculty. If you're re-delivering their pod and you want to include this in your, in your presentation, feel free to use this slide. We'll share with you guys after we're done so that you guys can kind of learn more about your faculty and they can learn more about each other as well. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on to our last activity. Let's go ahead and reflect on what we've been talking about. So on this last uh, slide, well, not the last slide, second to last. So what are some similarities that you noticed between classmates as you were looking at some of the ingredients for your different classmates? What are some things that you noticed that you guys have in common? Go ahead and we'll give you one minute to send a response. So remember, Nearpod has open-ended questions, poll questions, multiple choice quizzes, um, fill in the blank, any kind of formative or informal assessment that you would like to provide for your students or even for your, your fellow educators while you're delivering something, you can input it in here to get real-time feedback. And don't so. <laughs> forget about the add activity. So if you need to add something on the fly, if you want to add something or assessment or question based off of how the students have been responding so far. Don't forget about that. I call that on the fly. So we're all educators and we're all sweet. Yes, I hopefully, hopefully we're all sweet majority of the time. It's okay to be a little spicy sometimes. We need to definitely do some things outside of education. We have to kind of ha have balance, sharpen our saw so that we can help hopefully sharpen others. And our time is divided among other things. We are people that wear many hats. So we have to ensure that we're hopefully keeping everything balanced and we're not dropping the ball. All right, thank you guys for that. All right, let's learn about our classmates. This is our last activity, I promise. Um, but we want you, we want to see how creative our STFs can be. We want you to desi design a t-shirt um, to tell your classmates who you are. You can, you know, on this, you can insert images, you can draw on it yourself, you can use the text feature. So you be creative, create your t-shirt. We'll give you about a minute and a half, and then we'll share it. We have about a minute actually, <laughs> so we can stay on track with time. So go ahead and insert a quick picture or some text that kind of allows us to learn more about you guys. You know, some of you guys are new STFs, or maybe last year you were the secondary one, so this year you're the primary one. So all of these responsibilities are a little bit new to you. So go ahead and just insert either an image or some words to let us know more about you guys. And I apologize if anyone is trying to submit items as we're going through the Nearpod. Remember, the teacher controls the Nearpod lesson. So in this aspect, we are pushed for time. We only have about 20 minutes to cover Nearpod. So we have to kind of go through the, um, the activities a little quicker than, than how we would actually do it in the classroom for your students. So the teacher is in control. So you have to kind of follow our pace. So when we move on to a slide, your slide will automatically move on. So I definitely apologize if someone was not able to, to submit anything because a little faster than anticipated. Okay, I think that's cute. So we have the um, incredible. I love it. 
we have, we have somebody with a whole bunch of different <laughs> things coming out their brain. That's how I feel right now. I completely understand. Okay, a, a book reader. So someone is in is in love with reading books, and we have a, a chef. chef. I love it. All about love. I love it. Positive energy everywhere. I'll give you guys about fifteen more seconds to wrap up. If, your if you responses. have any more, as we're waiting on people to wrap up their responses, we can ask. Um, that you, if you have any questions, this will be the time to ask those about Nearpod, or you can type them in. If you do have a question, unmute yourself and ask, or you can type your question in about Nearpod. But remember, we are on live pace. The teacher is in control, so the students move at the teacher's pace. All right, we're going to go ahead and end this last activity. Um, just a couple of quick reminders. In the STF facilitators um, classroom, we have uh, the slide deck from the August 24th meeting. At that meeting, if you attended, we, we reviewed our expectations as a district for Nearpod. We're requesting that each teacher use Nearpod at least once or twice a week. So please, please, please kind of promote it across your, um, across your campus. Get the teachers excited about it so that they can see how easy it makes their life. And also we're asking that we at least have two Nearpod certified educators at each school site. Remember, it's super easy to become an, 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 um, a Nearpod educator. All you have to do is launch one lesson to at least 15 people and complete the application on Nearpod's website. So it's very easy. They respond back within about a month to let you know if you have been accepted. Okay, I see we have one question. How did you all create the sliding quotes that was actually created in Microsoft Sway? can um with nearpod you can use microsoft and google without leaving the actual software which is cool so if you look back at the go to meeting screen i can show you really quickly so if i'm creating my own lesson and it says add a slide i can do add content and if i scroll all the way down Oh, I'm sorry, over next to slideshow, there is the Microsoft Sway logo. If I click on that, it allows me to pull in already curated um, Sways or I can create my own Sway. So, so Sway is an awesome, awesome way to, that, that you can pull in some, some different things for your um, students or for your teachers. And a couple of few other questions. Are you requiring elementary teachers in grades K-3 to do two or more lessons on their part a week? K, K through tw uh, 12 should all use Nearpod on a daily basis. Yes, we're requiring everyone in the district. K, even if you want to train your pre-K teachers, it's going to be used with them as well. But we're definitely requiring that all teachers uh, use Nearpod at least twice a week. This was something requested from teachers by the district. So they honored the request. So to keep up with that, we just want to make sure that it's being used. And then remember also, you guys, we know that K through 3 are not one-to-one. -one. However, Nearpod can be accessed on desktop computers. So if they only have one desktop in their um, in their classroom or only two desktops in their classrooms, they can make Nearpod a center by using the, the self-paced lessons. The kids can access it on their own time. And it's also even iPad or tablet friendly as well. So try to definitely think outside of the box whenever it comes to K through three implementation. And also remember with the student pace, you have a lot of students, their parents like to work with them at home. So if you create student paced lessons and give the students the codes, the parents and the students can work on those things at home and that can count as it being used. So keep that in mind as well to make that parent home connection. And we have one more question. So one final question for another teacher who is interested in their pod certification. If I give a training, does that count as their official training? When they give their lesson to at least 15 people, does that mean other adults are to students? So for the 15 people, it could be anyone. So as long as they launch the lesson, because remember, Nearpod does not know if you're a kindergartner or if you're a 35-year-old. They, they do not know at all. So as long as they launch it to someone, more than 15 people, they're good to go. And um, for the STF redelivery, I am not sure we can count that because you guys aren't the Nearpod execs or whatever you want to call it. Um, they do have um, some self-paced webinars that they may have you guys um, watch for those teachers that you're training. For y'all, for STFs who attended the training, you guys can bypass the webinar. But for your teachers at your school site, they have a little quick, I think about 45-minute webinar on their site for you guys to watch.
on leisure that you guys can watch and then upload your uh your application i hope that answers your question miss laura any final questions before we go ahead and, and hold and send off the screen to the next presenter thank you guys so much for participating we enjoyed that have any questions please feel free to reach out to us sahara haney s glass for one nikki washington in, in washington, washington one we're your district pioneers so we kind of know near pies ins and outs if you feel like you need some more assistance just let us know we'll be glad to assist all right thank you keisha all right they did an excellent job of sharing a lot of resources and support materials um we are going to go back to our our hyperdoc so if you can join me back at our hyperdoc if you have forgotten how to get there if you accidentally closed that um, link it has been posted in um, the chat but the tiny url is tinyurl.com slash stf virtual um, we're going to move on to item number five so I'm actually going to deliver some content that's a little bit of a review for many of our returning STFs, but we have a lot of new STFs this year, and we want to make sure that everybody is aware of all the supports that we offer and that we're all um, using those supports to their fullest capacity. So under number five, I'm going to talk to you about the Instructional Technology Support Request Form. Um, it looks like I'm experiencing um, a little bit of a delay. I think we're good now. Okay, so I'm gonna click on uh, the Instructional Technology Support Request Form and it's going to take me to our website, which is um, ebrschoolsedtech.org. If you haven't visited our website recently, you definitely want to um, take this opportunity to visit our website and take a look at all of the great resources that are there. Um, Right now, we're going to talk about the integration support request. So if you go to the website and you look under support in the menu right here, um, and you look at integration support requests, it will take you to this page right here. There's a Google form here that you can fill out to request um, support for your site or for you personally. I think sometimes there's a little bit of a misconception that um, only maybe a school technology facilitator can fill this out or only the principal can fill this out and that is not true this form is live on our website and it's available to anybody who has a um, google account issued by ebr anybody um, with an account can log in to this form and send it into us and you'll see here you can actually choose um, like what kind of support you need. For example, maybe you need support with Clever. Maybe you need support integrating Google. Um, maybe you want some feedback or you need some help writing a grant for technology. Then it asks you to describe your specific um, technology integration support needs at this time, as well as the goals and the outcomes that you're hoping for. We just want to make sure that when we come, we come with um, your goals in mind and then it asks you what method of delivery. So you can pick that you want this to be one-on-one, -on -one, like maybe you want some hands-on assistance, maybe you want us to meet with a small group or a PLC, maybe you want a whole group professional development, or maybe you're like, you know what, you guys are great, but I don't really need to see you, I just need a Canvas course on this topic. And so this is a way to let us know what exactly it is that you're looking for. There is a place for you to put a preferred date and time as well as a secondary date and time. Um, Asking in enough time to give us um, a little bit of flexibility with our calendars is best, but definitely put in a preferred date and a secondary date and let us know how many participants you anticipate attending and your contact number in case we need to get in contact with you. And this is uh, received by our team members and then disseminated to the appropriate person, whether it's um, the technology facilitator assigned to your school or maybe it's like a special project maybe you need our canvas administrator to come in and so in this way we can best meet your needs and so i know a lot of times um, support comes in from the schools very informally for example one of us may be on site and uh somebody will ask us face to face hey can you support us we need this yada yada that's fine uh, sometimes a lot of support also comes in via email as well 
Um, but don't don't be surprised if you don't hear our technology facilitators kind of steering you towards the technology support request form. This helps us to streamline um, and improve our support process for you. And so we may say, sure, we are definitely available on Thursday, but I really need you to go and fill out that form for me if you don't mind. And so please just kind of help us with that and definitely share this form with your faculty as well. For example, if you're re-delivering Nearpod or, or Clever or one of our new tools, don't hesitate to share this link um, and this support request form with your faculty as a whole because you may have a teacher on campus who is really techy and would love to learn a new tool and wants to just reach out to our team and say, hey, I'm an ELA teacher. What tools do you have for me? Come visit me on my off hour. And we love to get requests like that as well. In addition, um, I also want to just give a little reminder about the EdTech Q&A forum. There is a link provided here. It also is found on our website. So if you're still on our website, if you look for, look under the um, support menu, um, you are looking for the EdTech Q&A forum. Now, the Vegas rule does apply to the EdTech Q&A forum. That means that you have to be logged into an EBR-issued Google account to be able to view this information. There are a few best practices posted here on the website when you're accessing um, the Q&A forum. For example, it reminds you that you need to be logged into your account. Um, it asks you to please search for your topic or question before posting a new topic or question to avoid repetition. So for example, if I scroll down here, let's say that I had a question about inventory. I can type in the word inventory and search. And all questions that have been posted to the Q&A forum regarding um, inventory control are here. And so let's say it was property control tag. I'm thinking, great, the question's already been posted. Ms. Carla Kuiper has actually already answered that. She's provided um, uh, an answer. She's provided phone numbers you can call. And she's even added an attachment to the manual to help you know for certain exactly what you need to do. So there's actually a lot of really relevant information here. So before you post a question, definitely search it to see if it's already been added and answered. Um, before you post a question, make sure it's a shared question by multiple individuals or departments. You'd be surprised how often we each individually get the same question from all of our um, different sites. So whenever you have a question, ask yourself, could this be a shared question? If the answer is yes, definitely head straight to the EdTech forum. If the answer is no, this is really context or site specific or even user specific, then yes, definitely shoot us an email. We're happy to help. Um, but by posting it here, you're actually helping out not just yourself, but everybody in our district. So don't, don't be shy. Post your questions here if you have them. Make sure that you're not revealing any private information about yourself, such as your login, your location, or your contact information. Even though the Vegas rule applies here, where what's said in EBR forum stays there, um, we also don't want to be opening it up. Um, sharing our personal information with other employees. There is the Me Too button. So if you see that a question has been submitted and uh, maybe it was just submitted and, and you're like, oh my goodness, that is the exact question that I have as well and I just haven't had time to post it, there is a Me Too button that you can click on the question that will kind of subscribe you to that question and when it is answered, you will receive an email notification with the answer as well. Keep in mind that the Q&A forum, while it's a really great tool, it doesn't actually replace the help desk ticket system. So if you need technology service repaired or installed, if you need a quote or if your Wi-Fi is down, um, the Q&A forum does not replace that. That's our um, IT team, our information technology team. So you'll still need to submit a help desk ticket for those items. But if these are user questions, like you just need help using the technology that is available to you that is working properly, um, we can answer those questions for you here at the um, EdTech Forum. So before mm -hmm. I go any further, I want to ask, are there any um, questions about either the technology support request form or the Q&A forum that I can answer at this time? All right, well, without further ado, I am going to hand over the presentation controls to Ms. Bonnie. And um, Ms. Bonnie is gonna be talking to you about the technology readiness survey.
Hey, can you hear me? Okay, sorry. All right. Um, so I'm Bonnie Chalette. My apologies. Uh, good afternoon. And we are looking at the staff technology Re readiness survey. The survey is available at EBR schools, edtech.org, um, under learning pathways. When you go there, you're going to see a whole lot of information about the pathways, why we're doing it, and uh, the information you can, once you take the survey, what you can do with that information. So your first step is, is to take the survey. If you haven't done it already, I know many of you have, and that is fantastic. Um, step two, look at your results, see what they mean. Um, and then from there, you will choose your pathway. If you're here, you're going to be the school technology facilitators. Um, once you've completed your survey, we have a whole list of pathways for you to take to be to to improve on you know and once you're there, um, you just explore what you think. There's a key at the bottom that says like what's required, what's recommended, and what is optional. So once again, we are asking that your staff complete this by the 30th of September. If you have any questions, of course, let our staff know and we will, we are at your back and call to help. So thank you, back to Keisha. Okay, um, at this time, if you have any questions, um, any questions pertaining to the technology readiness survey for staff, um, don't hesitate to type them in the chat box. Um, while we wait for some of those to potentially come in, I'm gonna actually hand it over to Ms. Gaff. Ms. Gaff, I'm super excited, is going to be taking over Destination Google this year. And I'm really excited about what she's gonna bring to the table and invest into that project. And so I'm going to hand over the presentation to her so that she can talk to you about some of those new and exciting things. Just bear with us just a moment. I know some weather is rolling in, and so we have some connectivity issues. Miss um, uh, Gaff was actually kicked out, and so um, while she's getting reconnected, and um, we are going to just take a moment. Hold on. Um, Carla, would you like to go ahead and do your part where we get Miss um, Miss Gaff reconnected, and that way um, we can kind of move forward. I'm sorry to call on you. Um, sure, no, no problem. We I could go ahead and and uh, talk about Clever for just a little bit, and then um, once we're through that, then we can go ahead and and hear about the exciting opportunities with Destination Google and boot camps. All right, so let me share my screen with. I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, so according to our agenda, you'll notice that we're just at the um, bottom of, of page one and moving on into page two. I'm going to talk about clever.com and uh, provide some helpful tips and also some resources for redelivery uh, for clever.com at your schools. So the first thing I want to do is go to the district website. And you may notice that I'm uh, as I'm sharing my screen that I'm on the quick links page on the main website, our webmaster has placed a button at the bottom of that page to make Clever Access a little more easy for students. The other way that you can access Clever very easily is to go to the top left, select the bookmarks, 
And you'll notice that there's several very helpful bookmarks here and Clever is the last one. So you can access those bookmarks if you are signed into Google Chrome. So again, notice that I'm using browser and I am signed in with my district account to access those bookmarks. Okay, I also want to talk about um, some of the tier one resources that are available through Clever. Many teachers are um, taking advantage of the ELA math, science and social studies resources. And I want to highlight some of the science and social studies resources that are available. For example, STEM. Uh, teachers need to go through Clever to be able to access defined STEM. So if you have teachers, high school teachers primarily, if they're looking for defined STEM and they're going to the website and having trouble logging in, they need to make sure that they're logging into the district's Clever portal. Uh, in addition, social studies, I want to uh, highlight DBQ Online and Studies Weekly. Again, these two resources are also um, exclusively accessed through the Clever Portal. And we put the Clever Portal together to make it easy and simple for teachers to set up programs, to set up classes, to set up resources for students to use. And we want students using these resources in the classroom and also at home. I also wanna to jump to the top of the Clever page this morning. I took the group on a walkthrough of, of the top part of the Clever page. There's a couple of things here that are particularly useful that you can show to teachers when you are re-delivering Clever at your schools. The first is the Clever Help button and it takes teachers and uh, school leaders as well as parents and students to the Clever Help site. And uh, you can see there's an introduction to Clever here with a one minute video and differentiated support. So there's a page linked which provides help for teachers, including a login handout and a login overview. And then, for example, there's also support for parents and students. Just providing an explanation of why the district is using Clever, a link to get to the website, and then a login guide for, for use at home. And all of that is at the top of the Clever page under Get Clever Help. The second button that I want to take some time and talk about is the Install Clever Chrome extension. Now, the Clever Chrome extension is unblocked and you may install it. This is available for both teachers and students when you're logged into your district Google account. And it's, an, it's a companion to the Clever website that extends the capabilities of the Clever portal. You may already have discovered if you've logged into Clever a couple of times that some sites um, and some apps uh, go straight into the program without you having to provide any additional logins. Whereas some programs, for example, I'm going to scroll down, like ReadWorks, um, do not have a partnership yet with Google, and they don't yet have a partnership um, for you to use your Google login or with Clever, and so it asks you to fill out login information. If you fill out that login information from the ReadWorks website when you set up your account, and you install the Clever extension. So you'll notice at the top right side of my page, I've installed the Clever extension. It will save that login for you just as if um, it was working in a, in a single sign-on situation. So it acts like a username and password vault, if you will, and it can help save a lot of time in the classroom, which is something that we really um, want you to take advantage of. I also want to make sure that I mention that we have a Clever Basics self-paced course in Canvas. It's worth one CLU. It's not very long and you can register for it and go sign me up so that you can receive that one CLU when you complete the course. Over here in Canvas, you'll notice that I'm in the all courses area. And I'm going to hit join this course to share the modules with you. The link to this course is also in Go Sign Me Up when you register. And you'll see that, again, it's very short and it will provide teachers with a fairly good overview of Clever, what it is, why we're using it. The, they can download the login guide that I was just showing you from the website. Um, there's an introduction to logging in with Google. 
troubleshooting errors, finding apps, and then another module on how to use some of the more advanced tools that uh, reside within Clever, things like the class tools, how to create a custom class page. So teachers can set up a page that would include links to uh, customized resources or links to their own website. And a lot more. There are some classroom management tools within Clever. They're not nearly as comprehensive as the tools that are in GoGuardian, but if teachers are interested, they can learn a little bit more about things like how to To um, one more thing that I want to mention before um, turning things back over to Ms. Gath is that I have included a hyperlink under E, which includes redelivery resources for school tech facilitators. So if you are planning a professional development, um, whole group or in a PLC, small group for your school, over the next few days or the next few weeks. I've got a drive folder here that I'm sharing and it's got a video that will explain Clever and how to log in and what it is. I've got a slide deck that you can take, use it just as it is for redelivery. It's designed for about a 10 to 15 minute hands-on through it in whatever way that best would help teachers at your site. And then the last two items, I've got a student logging guide. You may want to share this with parents at Open House and also that clever logging guide for teachers. If at any time you have questions about Clever, um, you can fill out the suggestion Google form, or feel free to send an email to the team. The suggestion Google form allows you to tell us about any apps or programs or links that you're looking for that would help your school. Keep in mind that while many apps on the Clever portal are open educational resources, some do require subscriptions, and so your school needs to have a subscription to access some of those. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to stop and find out if you have any questions. All right, well, if you think of questions, of course, feel free to place them in the chat box or he don't hesitate to reach out to the team. At this time, I'll turn things back over to Ms. Arsenault and Ms. Gath. Okay, we're gonna try this again. I know I have weather overhead and that's causing some issues with my connectivity. Um, we're going to see if we can get Ms. Gath connected um, at her site, and it looks like she is. Mrs. Gath has her screen um, shared. However, she is having some microphone issues. Her audio is not being shared for whatever reason. Okay. So I'm gonna have. I'm a, She's gonna use my computer to talk, but she will share her screen on her device. Okay. Good. 
Good afternoon, everyone. I am going to share information about Destination Google. If you will go to your agenda and click on the hyperlink for uh, Destination Google so that you can actually see the website. And so this year's campaign to get as many employees as possible Google certified, we have our, uh, our hub for keeping up with the data and also provide additional information to everyone. So at the uh, very top of the screen, you will see our flyer that usually goes out when we're sending out our uh, stickers and badges. And so that just kind of gives you an, uh, information and also hyperlinks to some of the resources or some of the training that's available to support you with getting either your level one, level two, or even getting certified as a trainer. As you scroll down, there are some additional links that you can go to that offers additional training as well. This flyer that says destination Google care package for school and department leaders is, is a flyer that is sent out as well with the stickers and badges, but it is used to give information or provide information to your administrators. The next portion of it is our map. And if you click on the map, you can actually, you can actually see the uh, individual schools. I'm sorry. You can see the individual schools once you go in and actually each of those little pins represents individuals that are certified at each school. In order to be added to this map, you can take this link here where you will go to a Google form and fill out all of your information and it will automatically send your information to a spreadsheet and then we will add you to the map. One thing that you have to be sure of is making sure that you add a copy of your certification. So there's a link here to upload your certification and that is needed in order to get your CLUs. So here we have information on how many individuals are certified on each campus. So we have it all schools and then we have it separated by elementary schools. And then we have actual individuals and what level of certification they have achieved. Down at the very bottom, there are some additional videos so that you can see uh, information about last year's campaign, Get on the Map. Uh, also, just some additional resources and some trainings that are available to you all. One thing we want to make sure of is that you remind anyone on your uh, campus that there are several Google uh, boot camps coming up. That information was provided on the agenda, and those dates are. I'm sorry. Uh, those dates are September 20th and 21st. October 4th and 5th, and December 14th, 17th, and 18th. And so these boot camps will provide support to anyone that is trying to attain level one certification or level two certification. So that kind of goes over our destination Google website and some of the upcoming training ways that we can support you. Please do not hesitate to send out an email to ask any questions or if you need to know any information for some additional resources that will support you in getting your certification.
I, if I'm not mistaken, I think you all have to have level one by December certification and level two by May of this school year. Uh, so please don't hesitate to ask for any support and we will support you in any way possible. Thank you. Okay, I am super excited that Ms. Gaff has joined our team and I'm excited about um, everything that she's bringing to the Destination Google um, campaign. And uh, don't hesitate, those boot camp dates, um, there's also some additional that are uh, posted for the spring as well. And those dates include level one, level two, and trainer boot camps. So no matter what level you're working on, there's something for everybody. And they're currently up, then go sign me up and, and spots for those have already started being filled. So if you've been waiting on us to announce boot camp dates, uh, right now is a really great time to rush over to go sign me up and actually register yourself for some of those. Okay, at this time, we are now on page two of our agenda. We're getting close to the bottom. I'm going to share the screen with um, Ms. Thomas and allow, and she's going to be talking to you about maps while we're working on that transition. If there is anybody who has an additional question, I know that there was one posted about Zern and Google. Ms. Kuiper answered that. So uh, yes, um, your Google login will work on the Zern sign-in page. If there are any additional questions, don't hesitate to post them um, at any time during this session, and we will definitely get to them before um, we're done here today. Hello, everyone. Let me try to Okay. Hello everyone. Um this is some information on maps and your Google EO. So what is maps? MAPS is the East Baton Rouge Parish School System's very own online personal, I'm sorry, online professional learning community. The purpose of MAPS is to offer a space where professionals can connect, share ideas, and discuss best practices through purposeful collaboration in an effort to positively impact student achievement. So, teachers who are members of a professional learning community benefit much more than teachers who attend professional development days. So, what is MAPS? M stands for, and that's just your standards based teaching, um, your everyday teaching, the things that you're doing in your classroom with your curriculum activities and best practices a um what are you doing that's great what are you doing that's making a difference those activities those lessons those songs those procedures those routines those tricks those creative tools you want to capture all of that pushing past proficient those activities that you have um come up with that have pushed the child to the next level and as shifts in instruction, those actual, we want to capture those new shifts that curriculum introduced um, from last year. So the goal of MAPS is to create lesson modules that EBR educators can learn and grow from one another. MAPS is housed in Canvas um, the components of MAPS consist of a video, lesson plan, resources, and we can even do a blog. And we want to customize those lessons specifically for team building, 
um, pacing, centers, classroom management, and even Chromebook management. If you have some good um, different ways to manage your Chromebooks, you want to capture that as well. Um, all Again, all of our um, MAPS lessons and videos are housed on the MAPS website. And I'm just going to click over to the MAPS Canvas course. And Ms. Adams has a nice course with um, an introduction for the MAPS videos. And as the videos are um, by content at the top, at the bottom, by grade level. And then we also have some ELC courses for high school and then some other different instructional management modules. So like if you were to um, it's not letting me do it, but if you were to click on one of the modules then it will bring you directly to here it is. It will bring you directly to all the different videos that we have on site on our website. So at the bottom, like for EdTech, we have some Palooza things. We have a Quizlet, a Nearpod, and then we have other technology integration lessons. So that's what we need help with. You have the choice to either do a, map, um, a MAPS course or either some other um, activities. But even if you do not decide to do a um, MAPS course, we would really like you to nominate a teacher to be videoed. Or if you know some other neat things that are going around your campus, we would love to come out and video because we need your resources in order to add things to our Canvas MAPS website. So please do not hesitate to send me an email, give me a call, and we'll brainstorm together. Also on the slide deck, if you click on um, the icon, it will take you to the fundamentals of MAPS. And if you decide to do a MAPS course, this will get you started with um, setting up your module. I need all this information. I need you to enroll into this class so that I can help you make your module great. Again, here's my information. And if I could assist you in developing a topic or if you would like to nominate someone to do a MAPS um, video, Please, 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 please do not hesitate to ask. We are here to assist. Do you have any questions? Okay, I'll turn it back over to Ms. Arsenault. Thank you. Okay, sorry guys. <clears throat> I just did a whole bunch of talking, but I was muted. So <laughs> let me catch up with you. So we're moving into the general questions and concerns portion of um, the meeting. I know that um, that we had our agenda. And so just because we have our agenda doesn't mean that there aren't questions that you may have that will be outside of what we had decided to talk about. So if there's anything 
um, any kind of information that you need to know, any questions that you have, please post them now or unmute yourself and feel free to join in and ask a question. Um, we are happy to help. In addition, um, while we're waiting for any potential questions to come in, I do want to direct your attention to the exit survey. So the last task that you must complete today before logging out of our GoTeam meeting is to access the exit survey. Um, this is the last task in terms of like getting your CLU. So you want to make sure, number one, you're signed up for this and go sign me up. Number two, you attended today and you're, you made sure that your name was viewable within the attendees screen of um, GoToMeeting. And number three, you want to make sure that you complete the exit survey. The exit survey is just a few simple and easy questions about today's um, webinar just to kind of make sure everybody was paying attention and that you got the most important information. And then the last section is asking you for some feedback. This is obviously our first virtual collaborative um, virtual webinar that we're pushing out for our STFs. And so as you can see, it's a learning experience for us as well. And so we definitely need your feedback so that we can improve this process for you guys and make it as seamless and as helpful as possible. So I see that we do have a question that's come in from Ms. Hall. She says, I was wondering if we have to attend both boot Google Bootcamp days or do we choose one? So this is a great question. It actually depends on what level of Google certification you're pursuing. So if you're pursuing um, level one certification, that is a two-day bootcamp. And if you register for a level one bootcamp, you must attend both days. You'll only get half of the content on one day and half on the other. Um, and so to be fully prepared to take the level one, you really need to come to both days. The level two boot camp is a one day boot camp. Um, if somebody's on our team and I'm saying that wrong, please correct me. But I believe that's a one day boot camp. Um, the trainer boot camp. Before I try and say, I'm actually going to pull up GSMU and make sure I'm telling you correctly. I know on GSMU um, it will be listed properly. Um, as far as how many days you'll need to attend for each one. So whatever whatever it says on here about how many days that that is um, is going on, then that is appropriate. Sorry, I have to log in. Miss Haney is helping us out. She says level one or two days, level two is only one and trainer boot camps are two days. But keep in mind, it's all live in uh, Go Sign Me Up. And so it'll let you know whether what you're registering for is just one or two days. Let's see. Also, the readiness survey for everyone on campus, such as paraprofessionals and cafeteria staff. Yes, it is. And the reason that I say yes is if you go to um, our learning pathways to the overview where it's talking to you about um, the learning pathways and about taking the survey. If you scroll down, you will see office and school support staff are on here. Um, you'll see that many of our departments district wide, for example, ESS is working really hard to become more Google centric um, just recently. And we've got a lot of our other district departments onboarding with that. And as a result, our, our paraprofessionals and our cafeteria staff, our school secretaries, all of those individuals will, um, will also need to be on the Google train. At the very least, they need to know how to log into their Google account and how to open a shared Google Doc and access their drive. They'll, they will find that in their emails, they'll start receiving um, emails where people are trying to share with them through Google in the district. And I think that you'll find that they'll be a little bit um, frustrated unless they're kind of boarding on this train with us. So yes, um, the readiness survey is for every employee and EBR from the very top. Um, um, and in every area of, of our schools as well. Is there funding for subs for teachers who want to attend or is the school responsible? A few teachers expressed interest in signing up. Um, unless I am incorrect and somebody from our team is welcome to chime in, um, there is not funding for substitutes for teachers at this time. However, you wanna keep in mind I know, I know that that can be difficult and a burden for schools, but you want to keep in mind that a Google Boot Camp, if we were to send teachers outside of our district to get a Google, Google Boot Camp, it's about $200 or more a seat, not including like the travel, the hotel, 
the food, all of that good stuff. And so when you look at it that way, um, it actually is, is a bargain. Um, but I know that sometimes it's a challenge for teachers to be able to come because of substitutes. But I'm sorry, at this time, there is not funding um, for substitutes for teachers. But I just I do want to strongly encourage our administrators um, and our school technology facilitators to really encourage teachers to attend, um, do whatever uh, creative um, funding or staffing that you need to do in order to make it happen. I think you'll find that it will, the benefits of it will definitely outweigh um, any drawbacks. Let's see, Are, is, did I answer the questions? Were there any follow-up questions, anything else? Um, Maybe I missed or maybe I didn't clarify or explain because these are all really great questions. Okay. All right. Okay. You're welcome to stay. Um, if you have additional questions, um, you can stay and chat with us. We'll stay live for about another five minutes. But if you, you do not have questions, definitely make sure that you click on the exit survey here um, at number 12 of our hyper document here. If you somehow closed your hyperdoc and you don't know how to get back to it, the tiny URL is right up here. I'll copy it and paste it again into the chat box so that you can get there if you need to. The exit survey is linked to number 12. Make sure you fill that out um, completely and that's um, that will guarantee you that you get your CLUs for attending today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to come in and tune in with us and definitely give us um, honest feedback so that we can improve what we offer to you. Again, we'll be here for another five minutes um, and then we'll be ending the meeting. So if you have any questions, feel free to submit them. We'll be here for another few minutes for you. Um, we have another question that's been submitted. Um, it's a great question. It says, um, if I'm worried that I will not be able to complete everything required of me for this position, is it possible to do as many as I can and just say that I do not need to get this stipend? Um, the task and the Googlios are designed to be accountability to... Um, to earn the stipend. We have to have some sort of accountability built in um, if we are actually offering a stipend for these things. You are gonna need to have a individual conversation with the um, technology facilitator assigned to your site about um, what you are able to cover and what, what your school's needs are. Um, and as the year goes along, the checklist will help us to guide what kind of support we offer and how we can help maybe make up some of the difference. We definitely don't want any of our sites to do without because um, many of our STFs are overloaded with lots of responsibilities. As far as the stipend goes, I'll be honest, um, making a final decision about the stipend is a little bit above um, my head. I will say that I, I 
I think that as long as there's been a sincere effort and we're in a situation where maybe it's most um, and maybe not not necessarily all, um, depending on um, the sincere effort and things of that nature, I'm sure somebody above me will be making a final decision. But definitely, if if you're in a situation where you can't do all, um, just do as much as you can and let us know how we can help you to make up the rest of that. And if there's anybody else on the team who wants to add to answer that question, um, please join in. Yeah, I'm joining in and I'd just like to say that I know that that's a concern that some tech facilitators have expressed. And I think that um, what we've stated, I think from the beginning of this whole journey that we've been on to um, provide you all with the stipend and the recognition for the work that you do is that if you run into trouble or if you feel like you're running into um, a wall in terms of getting the requirements completed, please reach out and let us know exactly where you feel like you are, um, you know, you're trying to balance um, things and something is getting lost. And, and we're definitely here, your tech, your school tech facilitator and also um, the rest of us on the team as well. We're, we're here to assist you in getting um, the requirements completed. It's if uh, for us to feel successful, then you have to grow your skills and you have to be successful this year as well. And so I really feel like that means that if you if you run into difficulties or if you're running into um, a difficulty with one or more of the requirements, let us know and we'll work with you on, on an individual basis. Okay, excellent answer. I see we have another question posted as well. It says the reflection page for the Googlio. Do I fill that out for every STF meeting? Okay, so um, there were a lot of requirements um, posted and a lot of resources posted to help you guys get your Googlio done. Um, Miss uh, Miss. Uh, Ms. Sahara is going to be coming back. She's been in all of our meetings. I'm going to defer to her in this situation because in all of our meetings, Ms. Sahara has been speaking to you guys about your Googleio and about those reflection forms and so on and so forth. So I'm going to let her log back in and um, answer your question. Um, while we're waiting for her to come back, is there any? Are there any other questions? These are all great questions. Hi, Keisha. Did they have any Googlio questions? I'm sorry. Yeah, the question was um, the reflection page for the Googlio. Do do they need to fill that out for every STF meeting? Um, yes. So for any meeting that they are um, claiming on their log form, they should definitely do a quick little paragraph um, a reflection for on their. Um, I'm sorry, on the reflection sheet. Correct. Okay. And keep in mind, um, some of these items that you're doing, if you just put them in a folder, like if you're not ready to build your Googlio right now, um, it's possible for you to just put them in a folder within your um, Google Drive. And uh, that way, when you get ready to build your Googlio, you can just auto feed those into your website. Um, so don't feel like um, that you've got to do every single component of this. Just take a quick five seconds to make a few notes about reflections and then later um, you can kind of um, fill those in. We've got another question about the Googleio. It says, how do we access Googleio? I must have missed that. Sahara, would you like to answer that? Yes, actually, can you go ahead and share my screen really quickly uh, for me, please? Of course. Yes. That is, and I will accept it in a second. Let me see. Thank you. All right. So you guys should see my screen. Okay, so in the Google Classroom that we have for you guys, TF classroom. Um, we have a lot of different things in here, but if you go to the July 2018 slide deck and it says STF initial meeting, if you click on that, it will open up to an actual to the slide deck that we use at the initial STF meeting in July. Once you're there, it is slide number seven. And on slide number seven, we have a couple of hyperlinks um, detailing what all should go how it should be made, what platform that we're using for the Googlio. And we also have an example of an, I'm sorry, yeah, we have an example of a, um, of a, of a Googlio for you guys to kind of go off of. 
if you click on the hyperlink, it will open up a practice Google Bill that I created for this purpose. And if you go back to the portfolio slide, um, slide number seven, I have a link that says directions on Google Bills can be found here. If you click on that, it will open up a PDF document that allows you to see what all should be in your Google Bill. And it also provides hyperlinks to the Google Sheet. I'm sorry, to the, um, to the, to the reflection sheet and also to the log. So once again, this can be found inside of the STF classroom. When you're there, on the left-hand side under topics, click July 2018 slide deck. And the slide deck for that um, STF meeting will pop up. Click on that and it's slide number seven. I hope that answers your questions. Giving it back to you, Keisha. Okay. Um, will there be a clever icon provided on the desktops? This is um, maybe a Carla Kuiper question. Um, if Carla is still with us, if you would like to chime in on this one um, about whether or not we will have um, a clever icon available. Okay, um, will there be a clever desktop icon? I will keep everyone posted as the um, request goes through the steps and see where, how far we can get. Okay, all right. With it to you, um, if you're using Clever in the computer lab setting. I know some people are and some people aren't, but I'll go ahead and I'll make the request and I'll keep everybody um, in the loop about how it goes. Awesome. I'm looking at the next question that says proof obtained, yes or no. Um, if you'd like to, uh, does that does that refer to the we are marked attended? Miss um, Desidera, if you'd like to give us a little bit more information about um, your question, so I can make sure we're answering the question properly, um, please do so either in the chat or by unmuting yourself. Um, Ms. Hall has asked, I know we're required to create Canvas and Google Classroom courses. Mm -hmm. I have created um, some that are for my teachers. Is that acceptable or do they have to be district courses? I can kind of jump in right there. So Mrs. Hall, um, remember you don't have to do um, a Canvas course if you don't choose. That is one of y'all's like little list of things that you can select from. Um, however, as long as it's accessible for someone to view, it can just be your school site or your district or the district, that's perfectly fine. So if you created one for, your, for WAM and all of your teachers there, that's perfectly fine. And I saw another question. Um, I'm sorry, not Wham. I'm thinking this is Miss Catrice Hall. I'm so sorry, Jessica, for Dufrock. Um, for Miss Laura, the proof obtained portion of the um, log, the yes or no portion, that is just kind of for us to see if you sign in or if there is some kind of um, proof that you actually attended one of the meetings, if we want to follow up to, to ensure that you actually did attend whatever you're, you're claiming to attend on the log. So that's the reason why we have that little box that says yes or no. So if you go to something out of state or out of the parish and you want to ensure that you get your credit for that, um, definitely be sure to either hold on to an agenda or some kind of form that shows that you were there. If you have that, you would just hit yes. Um, if you go to one of our STF meetings, if you sign in or if, like if it's a virtual meeting and you're using your full name so that we can give you credit, you would just hit yes. So you don't have to necessarily have anything in hand as long as you either signed up on Go Sign Me Up or you signed in on the act in the actual meeting whenever you attended. Okay, so that's uh, a final call. Um, for questions, if there's any additional questions, um, now's the moment to send them. I'm really appreciative to all of our team members for chiming in and helping to answer all of these questions. Um, I'm appreciative to everybody who has attended today. And last call, are there any other questions or anything else that we can help you with? Okay. Well, make sure you have completed the exit survey before you sign off today. Um, 
that will ensure that you get your CLUs. Yes, you do need to do a reflection sheet and um, all of those things um, assure that you're getting credit for um, attending this meeting. Everybody have a good afternoon. I'll remain here for just a couple more minutes just in case we have a question come along. But, um, but you guys are dismissed for the afternoon. Have a great one and we'll see you again soon.